Forests cover approximately 30% of the planet's total land area, yet roughly 13 million hectares, an area the size of Bangladesh, are lost each year. This alarming deforestation and forest degradation releases high volumes of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, accounting for over 17% of total global emissions. It also destabilizes local weather patterns, threatens biodiversity, and impacts the health and livelihoods of hundreds of millions of people around the world. In response, the United Nations created the UN RED program, a collaborative initiative supporting a growing number of partner countries in Africa, Asia Pacific and Latin America with national RED Plus processes. The aim of RED Plus is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from deforestation and forest degradation through the conservation, restoration and better management of forests. Under this global initiative, developing countries can receive payments for successful emissions reductions. Some partner countries have already made significant progress. The Democratic Republic of the Congo contains 60% of the Congo Basin rainforest, the second largest contiguous rainforest in the world. A new national Red Plus Fund has been set up to attract private and public sector investment in the conservation, restoration and sustainable management of forests all across the country. La RED joue un rôle important. Il est prévu la revisitation des lois sectorielles, notamment le code forestier, le code minier, le code foncier. Dès que ces codes-là sont revisités, ça va permettre de bien gérer, de bien protéger les forêts. The National Red Plus Strategy addresses the population's dependence on the forest for firewood, charcoal and food. Several pilot projects are working with communities to reduce their impact on forest resources. Les paysans viennent couper dans la réserve parce qu'ils n'ont plus de forêt. Il est obligé parce qu'il doit vivre aussi de venir dans la réserve couper, chercher les bois de chauffe pour préparer ce qu'il faut pour lui et pour ses enfants. Il faut commencer par résoudre le problème au niveau des paysans et après chez nous. The government and NGOs have been training local farmers in reforestation, beekeeping, fish farming, agroforestry and rice and charcoal production. This not only provides an income all year around, but means farmers no longer need to cut the forest to make new fields. Je ne pouvais pas nourrir ma famille aujourd'hui et même supporter les, leurs études. Après la formation, j'ai quadruplé mes, mes recettes et même mes connaissances. Et il y a une très très grande différence parce que maintenant nous ne faisons pas plus de culture sur Brilly. Indonesia is among the world's top greenhouse gas emitters, mainly due to deforestation and peatland degradation. This is predominantly driven by the rapidly growing palm oil industry, expansion of agricultural land and forest fires. Oh, there are many challenges for sure, okay? because we've been, we've been living in the past 40 years with the paradigm that you cut the forest and you get revenues. Now, you have to change the paradigm. As an alternative path to economic growth, Indonesia is currently implementing more than 40 Red Plus pilot projects, protecting and restoring its rainforests. Since uh, 2010, province of Central Kalimantan as a pilot province for a Red Plus implementation. My vision is how to make a better life for the people. And I have a program to make sustainable livelihood, not only for the poorest, but also for the people and also for all the world. One of the key achievements in Indonesia has been the development of a Red Plus national strategy and the creation of a Red Plus fund, which will support activities across this vast country. A presidential task force is also improving coordination across key government agencies. The lasting success of Red Plus will depend upon a wider transition to a green economy. An economy that is resource efficient, socially inclusive and maintains the country's natural capital. Activities such as the Rattan project in Henda have helped to move the community away from unsustainable agricultural practices while providing new income opportunities. 
Indonesia is a country with 240 million people. One out of six uh, live uh, together with the, with the forest. We have to protect them, we have to support them, because actually they are the guardian of the forest. Ecuador is one of the most biodiverse countries in the world. However, over 60,000 hectares of forest are lost annually, principally due to the expansion of the agricultural frontier and unsustainable agricultural practices. With 26 indigenous groups speaking many different languages, part of the challenge in Ecuador has been to ensure that information about Red Plus is communicated effectively. Some groups see opportunities, other ha others have been very clear in telling us we don't want to be involved and we respect that. We just want to make sure that they have all the information in their hands. Local communities and indigenous groups are at the heart of Ecuador's national Red Plus efforts. The development of agroforestry initiatives has enabled individuals to increase revenue while conserving the forest and promoting biodiversity. One such project is based on a traditional chakra system growing cocoa. Hemos iniciado algunos eh, procesos investigativos. Hay resultados preliminares que nos dicen que 141 toneladas de carbono se mantienen secuestrado en una hectárea de chakra, pero también el doble de biodiversidad eh, en relación a los potreros y al cacao en monocultivo. Como antes nosotros teníamos un muy poco y ahora nosotros ganamos con, con el cacao y hago estudiar a mis hijos y ahora no tenemos que botarnos todos los árboles. A public and private sector investment of about $30 billion per year could halve the global rate of deforestation by 2020 and enable the sustainable management, conservation and restoration of the world's forests. The cost may seem significant, but restoring just 15% of the world's degraded forests could generate up to $85 billion of ecosystem services every year and create more than 5 million jobs. This transition to a green economy is vital, not just for the world's poorest communities and indigenous peoples who depend upon the forests, but also as an essential component in the fight against climate change for all of us.